We're glad you've joined us. Good to see some of you back in the Lord's house. We've been missing some of you. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's with heavy hearts we come this morning with the loss of uh, Brother Mike. Uh, but I tell you what, he's won the victory. Amen. And we're going to do what he'd want us to do. We're going to press right on. And uh, we're going to have a good service this morning. Just praying the Lord bless us uh, as only he can. But he'll surely, surely uh, be missed by all of us. That's for sure. Stand with me. We want to read the scripture this morning. Our theme, this is Vision Sunday. Do this once a year. And uh, our, our theme this year is, hey, be strong in the Lord. Amen. If there was ever a time the church needs to be strong, listen to me, it's now. Yeah. It's today. That's our theme, be strong in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brother, notice what he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That ought to be our goal. That ought to be our prayer. That must be our desire yes. as we go on as a church. Pray with me. Our Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's been able to gather this morning on this uh, cold morning. And yet, Lord, we've come into the house of God in the warmth of your Holy Spirit in the fellowship of the saints. And, Lord, we're praying you bless us with a good service this morning. Lord, how we pray for Sister Kay and all the family. Lord, would you comfort their hearts? Would you give them peace? Lord, would you just encourage them in a, in a difficult day? Uh, and yet we know that our brother Mike has won the victory, and we thank you for that. Lord, we just pray would you bless our worship now, uh, meet every need in the house, and we're going to thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. While you're standing, let's sing a song. Amen. Page 618 should be up here. If you're not, 618 in your hymn. <clears throat> stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. Ye that are men now save him against unnumbered foes. Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm a flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day, the noise of battle, the next, the victor song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Father, that you just touch 
moves and bring this nation once again back to God. Lord, we ask that you bless in our service this morning. We ask for the very presence and power of God. Lord, we pray that you anoint the message. Bless Brother Larry as he brings it. Father, it may be a message to encourage your children and strengthen us. Lord, help us also those who may be here who stand in a guilty position in front of us that they receive the need for Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for the Maluni family. Lord, we just ask in Jesus' name the Spirit of God just come down and comfort them, overshadow them, and lift them up, knowing that Mike's home. Lord, he's rejoicing in our behalf. Now, Father, have your way. Lead us in your will. Touch those that are sick and afflicted. Heal them and give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Here's some announcements for you this morning. Uh, we are having services this evening. We're back on track, back on target. Uh, men and ladies prayer, 545, 6 o'clock evening worship. Uh, it'll be probably, we'll have a little shorter service this evening. Uh, some of the, Brother Mike, the visitation. Let me say this, and then I'll, I'll continue on. Visitation for Mike is at Billiards Deloge uh, today. Uh, 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock, 3 o'clock family, 4 o'clock for our church family and others from 4 to 8. Uh, funeral then, visitation in the morning here at the church uh, from 9 o'clock till 10.30. They had to juggle the times a little bit because of another funeral service uh, at, the, at the grave site. So it's a 10.30 service, uh, and that will be here in the morning. And you be praying God bless uh, in a very, very special way. Some of you may want to go by the funeral home uh, before church tonight. Some of you may want to go uh, a little after. So what we're, we're going to do tonight, we're going to meet, we're going to have church. I just hate to get on there and say we're canceling another service. So we're going to have church, and we may sing one or two songs. I'll bring my message, and we'll get out early, early enough for anybody that wants to go down after the service, go on down uh, this evening. So we'll make that available for, that'll help any of you that it will. So uh, we want to support the family. Amen? Amen. Want to be an encouragement uh, to this family uh, in this time of bereavement. Other than, so prayer time is 45, 545, 6 o'clock worship. Uh, tomorrow night, pastor's deacons meeting, first Free Will Baptist in Park Hills, 6 o'clock. And then Wednesday worship, 7 o'clock, I'll be preaching Wednesday night. So uh, looking forward to, uh, to that. Looking forward to a good church this morning. This looks like a church full to what we've been having. And, uh, but anyway, we're, we're sure glad you're uh, doing well and back in the house of God this morning. Lord bless each one of you. Brother James. Do we have any New Year's babies? In other words, birthdays. Nobody born around New Year's Day, huh? How about anniversaries? Oh, you? Oh, your knees. I met somebody here today. <laughs> Anybody here today with a birthday or anniversary? Okay. Donna, did you raise your hand? How many years, Roger? 52. 52. Well, happy anniversary. Well, let's sing happy anniversary to them. Happy anniversary to you, happy anniversary to you, may the Lord bless and keep you, happy anniversary to you. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, page 450. so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know thus saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to 
trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus, simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. 693, what a day that will be. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore On that happy golden shore What a day, glorious day that will be What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see And I look upon His face The one who saved me by His grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. I'm forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. John.
Brother Mike's family's watching. We miss you. We love you. But we know where you're at. And that's God's promise. He promises heaven to the Christian. But he also promises judgment to those that don't accept him as their Savior. If I had only known the last time would be the last time. I would have put off all the things I had to do. I would have stayed a little longer, held on a little tighter. Oh, what I'd give for one more day with you. There is a wound here in my heart where something's missing. And they tell me that it's going to heal. But I know you're in the place where all your wounds have been erased And knowing you are healed is healing mine The only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing as broken All the old will be the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down Said the only scars in heaven Are on the hands that hold you now I know the road you walk was anything but easy Picked up your share of scars along the way But now you're standing in the sun You fought your fight and your race is run Your pain is all a million miles away The only scars in heaven They won't belong to me and you There'll be no such thing All the old we may do And the thought that makes me smile now Even as the tears fall down That's the only scars in heaven We're on the hands that hold Standing with you in the sun I fight this fight and this race I'll run Until I finally see what you can see new soundtracks for Christmas. Some of them were requests. 
some of them were just songs that I've heard and wrote down and felt I might be able to sing sometime. That was one of them. <laughs> That's okay, though. It's a beautiful song, isn't it? Great message. Um, I first met Brother Mike in uh, 1995. Uh, his uncle, Lloyd, we called him Brother Monk, uh, was a deacon here at the time, and he led me to the Lord uh, on a Thursday after Easter Sunday in April 1995. And uh, about six months later, Brother Monk passed and went on home to be with the Lord. And, uh, of course, uh, Sister Bernice, we called her Shorty. Um, they had the family dinner at their house up here in Bonterre. And uh, that's where I met, first met Brother Mike. I think he was deacon at Parkview Church at the time. And, uh, but uh, it's been a joy uh, laboring in the Lord with him and uh, fellowshipping with him. And he's going to be missed. Uh, <clears throat> pray for the family because... Uh, he loved his family so much, and they loved him. And uh, I know this church family loved him, too. <clears throat> this song uh, it was one I heard months ago, and it has so much meaning today. I mean, it, it's, I've, I've sing some songs. I've dedicated some songs. to. We've had so many uh, in the 27 years I've been going here almost uh, that have gone on to be with the Lord. And... Uh, I know Brother Larry can stand up here and, and know exactly where each one of them sat every service. And, uh, and now we'll remember Brother Mike's place. <clears throat> it's called, if I can sing it, The People That God Gives You. believe he's gone thought he'd be here forever one more time times proved me wrong it was just a week ago that I should call and say hello I'm reminded once again Life's a vapor in the wind Love the people that God gives you They're a gift that heaven sends Live and laugh and make some miss of memory Treasure every moment spent Cause, no Cause none of us are here, are here forever. forever That's a proven fact Love, Love the people that God gives you Cause one day Day the mirror tells a story. Wonder where the time has gone. Children laughing round the table. Now have children of their own. There may, there may be, be things, things you need to say. To say. While today is still today, you have, you have a chance, chance to hold them in close. One, One more chance, chance to let them know. Love the, the people, people that God is true. They're a gift that heaven sent. Live and laugh and make some memory. Treasure every moment spent. Cause no words are here forever. That's a proven fact. Love the people that God gives you. Oh, 
of us are here forever. That's a proven fact. Just, Just love the people that God gives you. Cause one day he'll want them Got my mic. Matt, would you get my mic for me, please? Appreciate it. And while he's doing that, uh, just on, on want to say also concerning Mike, what a great deacon your church had in Mike Looney. Amen. Amen. What a great deacon. Great song leader. Great friend. Uh, we visited a lot together in hospitals back when we could. And we ate a lot of Cracker Barrel breakfast together. <laughs> we absolutely did. And uh, But I'll tell you what. What a blessing. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Good to be in God's house. Amen. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to press right on. God's got a plan for all of us. Amen. And it's to win souls, grow the church, and do well. We want to end as well as Brother Mike Looney ended. Amen. Amen? That ought to be our goal this morning. Hey, turn with me in your Bible to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. We're going to begin there. Vision Sunday. This is the one Sunday morning in the year that is not what you would call an evangelistic Sunday morning service. Uh, typically, almost any Sunday morning service at Gospel Light Church is pretty evangelistic. It's just that there might be somebody lost in the crowd that needs to get saved. Just that there might be somebody in the crowd that really needs to rededicate their life. Get back with God the way they ought to be. But this morning, as we think of Vision Sunday, we just really share our heart with you. Um, where we've been this last year, uh, we, we put a little New Year's Eve uh, devotion out on the website. We hadn't done that for a while. And uh, as, as of uh, last night, it had almost 100 views uh, between uh, Facebook and our YouTube uh, place where, where it's found on there. So we're thankful for that. So you kind of, if you've watched it, you kind of know where, we, where we've where we been. Uh, but let's stand while we read a scripture. Ephesians 6, we're going to read verse 10 and 11 as our text this morning. Here's what the Apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus. Finally, my brethren, hey, in conclusion of, after summing everything up, he said, finally, here's what you ought to do. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Brother Rich, will you pray for the preaching? Amen. You can be seated. Well, we've got some things behind us in 2021. Uh, I won't spend much time on this, but we know the year prior to that, 2019, was a disaster. Uh, and so last year we had some goals. We shared some visions with you uh, that first Sunday in 2021, Vision Sunday. Was what our, one of our main goals, we wanted the church to get all of its ministries up and running again. Because, I mean, we were just kind of partially functioning there at the end of that year. And you know what? Very quickly, uh, in January this last year, we did just that. We went back to Sunday school, morning worship, evening worship, Wednesday night worship. Uh, by November, 
you know, we had progressed through the year as the year went on. Uh, you know what? By November, we was averaging a little over 100 for morning worship again. We saw some folks saved last year. We saw some people follow the Lord in Christian baptism. Uh, I mean, we was having all of our regular services and just about as normal as normal could get, you know. And then all of a sudden, the first week of December happened. And, and in three weeks' time, we had 25 COVID cases within our church family. And I tell you, our t- attendance was devastated, just got worse each Sunday. It, it bottomed out uh, last Sunday at, I believe, was it 29? Uh, last Sunday morning, uh, but good to see some of you folks coming back. Good to see some of the empty pews filling up. I like to use that word, filling up again, okay? Uh, but good to see a lot of you back in the Lord's house today. Uh, I guess last Sunday morning was the lowest Sunday attendance that I can remember since the late 70s when we began. And, and so, but anyway, uh, someone would say, uh, Preacher, are you discouraged? Not at all. Because I'm optimistic that God has proved Himself to be faithful even in a difficult time. Amen. You know that? That's what you need to consider. It was not 2021. It was not one of them woe is me years. It was one of those praise the Lord years. Because God proved Himself faithful. It's easy to say praise the Lord when the church is full. But I tell you what, Paul learned how to sing in a prison at midnight in shackles and still praise the Lord. You know what Paul found out? He found out what we have found out in recent days. God's faithful no matter where you're at. God has proved Himself, and He's constant at all times. So what do you think? I think it may be a few weeks before we get back to total normal again. Uh, but I tell you what, I, I believe God's got great things for Gospel Light this year, in this new year. I believe that. Uh, so I just want to share my heart with you, share some Visions for what are we going to try to accomplish this year. Our theme, hey, be strong in the Lord. And and you know, when I say that, be strong in the Lord, uh, I'm not trying to be prophetic by any means. But I believe 2022 will be another difficult year for the church. I believe the persecution is rising to God's people, to Christians, to churches, I believe that want to stay true to the Word of God. I see some hard days ahead. Not that we can't be full of joy and victory and get people saved and grow this church and and, and fill up some pews this year, but I think as a whole, the church is a target this year. The devil has the church as a target. And and listen, and so if there was ever a year that we need to be strong in the Lord, it's wake-up time. Because we need to be strong in the Lord now. Not later on, but now. We need to be strong in the Lord. Uh, my desire as your pastor is still to win lost souls to Christ. It's still to grow God's church. It, it is, uh, you know what, uh, but I believe this. You know all these years how we've kind of measured success? Well, in a sense, and it, and it doesn't always show success. Because some of the biggest churches in America today, I wouldn't want to go to. Okay, so size of a crowd is not always the measure of success. But I think as Free Will Baptist in our area, uh, we kind of use that as a measure of success to a degree. Hey, you know when the church is running 50 and all of a sudden you're running 100, praise God. When you're running 100 and all of a sudden you're running 150, praise God, there's success. And you can go on and on with those figures. Uh, I think this year... You may have to measure success in a different way than attendance, growing. Now, I full, listen, don't get me wrong. I fully expect to win people to Christ and the church to grow this year. I believe that. We saw several families, new families, added in 2021. You know, God did that. God absolutely did that. As we was obedient to preach, obedient to be a witness, as you folks continued to be, hey, you was faithful in inviting folks to the house of the Lord, and you know what? And many came. So I, I, I believe we can still grow as a church. <clears throat> I believe we can see our crowd grow and some empty pews filled this year. But, but I'm just saying that to say this. I, I think you measure success by more than just what the crowd looks like. I think you measure success by 
What kind of relationship have you got with God? And it's time for you to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Here's what I believe this morning, church. I believe we're in the final stretch. I believe we're at the midnight hour. I believe the day to work is finally coming to a close. And there'll be time to work no more for the Lord. I, I, I believe that. We're in the final stretch. Persecution for the church, it's on the rise. I believe, we're, we, I believe this morning we are facing uh, the power and the dominance of this new world order, this one world government, that believe it or not, you may not realize it, is already in motion. The wheels are already turning on the one world government that the Lord told us about a long time ago in the Scriptures. Hey, listen, it has come together. They don't even try to hide it any longer. I mean, it's the new world order. It's the new one world government. And I believe as we, we see the, the, the power and the dominance of that one world control, uh, I, I, see, I see the Antichrist right around the corner. I see his control. There's going to be, the world, is the world in chaos today? The whole planet is in chaos. And eventually there's going to be a man that's going to come on the scene and seemingly have all the answers and be able to kind of put the world back together again. Say, well, that's great. That's not too great because his name is the Antichrist. Here's what I think, this is why I, I, I interpret Scripture, and I believe the church is about ready to get raptured any day now. I believe it's soon. I believe it's close. I'm not a time-setting preacher, never have been. Can't do it this morning. But I tell you what, when I see some of the things that's getting ready to go into motion that I believe is going to happen during the seven-year tribulation, the coming of Jesus must be upon us. So, it's time for you to be strong in the Lord. If you've been a wishy-washy Christian, it's time to redeem the time and get serious with God. I mean, this time, if there was ever a day to get faithful to your church, listen, it's now. Oh, we need to be on the firing line for God. So I believe we're facing some of these things coming up very quickly. We're witnessing what I believe the Bible also speaks about a great falling away in the last days. The Laodicean church age. I mean, the lukewarm church. Maybe they're not totally cold yet, but they're sure not on fire for God either. And, and listen, and Jesus, He wasn't too happy about that when He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And so I believe that we're living in that last days falling away from the church. So what do you think? What am I expecting as a pastor of Gospel Light Church? And we, we preached on Ecclesiastes here a few Wednesday nights ago. You know what? There's a, there's a time to live and there's a time to die and there's a, uh, there's a time for, you know, it, it went on and on and on. You'll read, read that in, in Ecclesiastes. Here's what I think we're going to see at Gospel Light Church this year. And I'm not prophetic. I've just been your pastor long enough. I know what to expect. There's going to be some folks live. And there's going to be some folks die this year in this crowd. There's going to be some folks come and there'll be some folks go. As we're in the last days falling away, please, please, don't you be part of that falling away crowd. But I'm just telling you, there's going to be some come and there's going to be some go. Because the devil is a deceiver. And too many Christians, listen to what I'm about to say, and too many Christians who ought to know better let the devil deceive him. Who ought to know better, get swept in under the deceit of the devil, and their, their relationship with God cools down, and then they become an open target for the devil. Listen, I believe we're seeing that last days falling away of the church right now. Many have been deceived by the devil's lies, only to find out after it's all over with, he really is a liar. Uh, you know what? I'll share this with you. Uh, I used to be kind of concerned. The last few years especially, I'm getting older. 72 years old now. Been your pastor a long time. I've buried a lot of people younger than me. And so I've been real concerned the last few years 
after putting all the years of ministry I have into this church family, I want to make sure if something happens to me that it's well cared for. That we got a man in the pulpit that's going to press right on and keep this church fundamental and traditional and right with God. And that's kind of been our prayer and everything. And uh, that was kind of our thought with Brother Bradley. Brother Bradley, if you're watching this, you flew south on me, man. <laughs> but I'm, here's, here's where I'm at with that today. I'm not so, and don't get me wrong, the Lord could take me out today and it'd be all right. And I expect you to go on. Just as we're going on without Brother Mike, because that's God's will. I expect, if I, if I drop today, I expect this church to go on. Don't you miss a beat. You go on for Jesus. But I'm not so concerned about today about who the next pastor is going to be. Because I really sincerely believe the things I'm sharing with you this morning is so true. I believe I could be the last pastor of Gospel Eye Church. If the Lord don't take me out soon. I believe I could be not only the first pastor for many of you, I could be your last pastor. Time's that short. Time's that short. Oh, listen, we're close to the coming of Christ. I, I believe this. So there's a few truths I want to share with you this morning. Some fresh commitments we need to make as we consider our vision for Vision Sunday. By the way, without a vision, people perish. Got to have a vision. Got to set some goals. Got to be focused. Where are we going this year? And I believe 2022 must be a year of purpose and it must be a year of vision. Three things I want to share with you. It's time to do these three things. You ready? Number one, listen up, because this is to every one of us. It is time to be mindful that our daily blessings are really a gift of God. And we need to be pleasing God in these days. It's time to grasp that. It's time to realize that. Every day, and I've said that a lot, I think, in recent days and different messages. I'm believing it more and more. I can't pray in the morning. I can't start my prayers in, anymore in the mornings without thanking God for the gift of one more day. Every day. Did you realize when you woke, did you even think about that when you woke up this morning? You know what? This morning was another gift. God gave you another gift. He gave you another day. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't even know what today holds. So we're not going to boast about tomorrow, but we're going to plan for tomorrow. But you know what? I want you to accept it's time to be mindful of your daily blessings. Hey, every, everything that, you know, it ought to be Thanksgiving every day. Be thankful for what God has blessed you with. Thankful for family. Thankful for friends. Thankful for your church. Your church family. And as you, if, you can, if you can get this in your heart, and you can start grasping every day, and really accept it, not just verbally, I mean really get this, that every day is a gift from God, if you can get a hold of that, then I think you can start living each day a little better for God. And you ought to start looking at every day. It's a gift from God, but it's also an opportunity for you to do something for God. Listen, we're not just working for God. We're working with God. Understand? And, and you know, the Lord teaches us to number our days. Psalms 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days. Why? He said that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Here's what I'm saying. First thing. Don't waste another day, church. Don't waste another day. Make every day count for God. You know, I think sometimes we get so caught up, New Year's resolutions and plans and setting goals, and we're going to try to do this next week and this next month. And, and it's good. we got a calendar that, that's filling up already for this year. Some good things I believe we're going to see. But I, I can get so caught up what we're going to do next month and next year, uh, th throughout this year, I can do nothing today. I need to do something today. <laughs> Amen? Listen, so every day is a gift from God. Be mindful of His daily blessings. And let's do everything we can to redeem the time and try to please God. Can you do that? Try to please God. I mean, 
Solomon had it right at the end of Ecclesiastes, didn't he? Hey, the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. That's the duty of man. And that's what we ought to be about this morning. The second thing I want to share with you is this. Not only is it time to be mindful of our, uh, our daily gift from God, and our daily blessings, and try to please Him. Here's what I believe. Secondly, it is time also to get your family and friends right with God. I'm going to tell you something. The door's about ready to shut on the ark. You better be getting the family in like Noah did. He got them all in before the door shut and the rain fell, didn't he? And I I believe today that we're living in a day where folks are running from God, folks are ignoring God, people has no time for God, and if we the church don't reach them, and I'm talking about our loved ones and our friends, if we don't reach them, they're going to die lost. Hey, they're going to miss the boat. They're going to be on the outside rather than on the inside. I think it's time to do literally everything you can to win your loved ones and friends to Jesus. Running out of time, church. The day is short. The time is at hand. We've got to do everything we can to win our loved ones to Christ. There's a scripture. I, I like this. I think I'll read it. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, beginning in verse 32. I'm going to read several verses real quick. Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 32. This is Jesus speaking. And he said, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Listen, summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. You know what that means, at the door? It means at the door. I mean, it's here. He said, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Remember what I said? We can't set a time. We can't set a day. No, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, here's a reminder for us, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For in these days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You know what that means? Church, until the flood came, and the Lord, by the way, Noah didn't shut the door. God shut the door. And before God shut the door, it was business as usual. They was eating and drinking and giving in marriage and they was coming and going. It was just life as usual. They knew not, verse 39, until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch ye therefore. Hey church, be strong in the Lord this morning. Watch therefore, for you not know what hour your Lord doth come. We've got to be standing strong. Amen? Third thing I want to share with you is this. It's time to focus forward and serve the Lord and serve Him well. Listen, I want to end well. I want the Lord to be able to say to us, Hey, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. I believe Mike heard that the other day. You know what they said? Died with a smile on his face. Who knows what he might have saw at that very moment. Boy, I tell you what. I think we need to end well. Focus forward. Serve the Lord. Set some goals. Make some plans. Hey, stay focused. I said, I think we got a good calendar going for this year. Some events planned. and I think it's going to be a good year. We're going to do some outreach. Do all we can to win souls to Christ. So I think it's good to set goals. Make plans. Stay focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what I think we ought to do. We must build strong and end well. I believe that. That's my goal. That's my desire. Hey, preacher, you got any New Year's resolutions? 
No, I give up trying to lose weight. I just want to live for Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Just want to live for Jesus. But understand this. Look at Psalms 27, 1. Hey, be strong in the Lord. Church, that's to you and me. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Did you hear that? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let me remind you something this morning. This one world government, this one world agenda right now is trying to put fear into the entire world. They're trying to control us through fear. That's the truth. Fear. I understand this. I think there's only one thing we ought to really fear today, and it's God Himself. He did not give us a spirit of fear. He says in this verse, The Lord is my light. He's my salvation. Hey, whom shall I fear? And the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hey, church, be strong in the Lord today. How about chapter 46? We're in Psalms. Might as well look at it. Psalms 46, verse 1. Psalms 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and, what's that word? He's our strength. He's our, we can be strong in the Lord today. A very present help in trouble. That means when you got a problem, God can help you. When, you got a, you, when you're dealing with something, God's there to help you. He'll help us in time of trouble. He's our strength. He's our rock. Oh, listen, as we, as we focus on serving the Lord and uh, serving Him well this year, listen, I think it's time for the church to commit themselves to be faithful. Hey, faithful! That means not hit and miss. That means be faithful. You know, I don't, when, I, when I start talking about faithfulness to the Lord, I don't worry about offending somebody. Because listen, that's what God, that's our duty. We ought to be faithful. Husbands, let me ask you a question. I hope you answer this real quickly and simply. You think you ought to be faithful to your wife? Absolutely. No question about that. Wives, you think you ought to be faithful to your husband? Absolutely. There's no question about that. Then why is it a question when I say be faithful to the Lord? And some folks think that's an option. <laughs> it's not an option for husbands to be faithful to their wives. It's not an option for wives to be faithful to their husbands. And it's not an option for the church to be faithful to the church. Amen. Ought to be faithful. You know what that means? God's house is priority. Being faithful to God's house is priority. I, I mean, listen, if I didn't practice it or believe it, I wouldn't preach it. But I believe we ought to be faithful and committed to God's house. Hey, you want to focus forward and serve well? Get faithful to God's house. I think we're supposed to occupy until He comes. Isn't that what the Scripture says? Hey, occupy until He comes. And that does not sit back on easy street and do nothing. What it really means is we're going to work till Jesus comes. I like that song, don't you? Hey, we're going to work till Jesus comes. Praise the Lord. I, I mean, listen, through, through various ministries within this church, uh, there's just a lot of things I believe we can get restarted and do well this year. When this COVID thing finally dies down, I want to say let's go back to organized visitation. You know, organized visitation. we got a time we're going out. We know when we're going. We know where we're going. We're going to do that as soon as we can. You know what? Outdoor ministries. This church has been blessed with a bunch of guys that really love our outdoors ministry. Uh, uh, you know, that's a ministry. And I, I, I want us to get that rolling as soon as we possibly can. This is a mission-minded church. We will continue to heavily support missions. That's God's will for this church. We're going to do that. You know what? Now, our goal a couple years ago, in a sense, is still our goal. Remember what it was? Be more, we wanted more of God, not less. We didn't want less of God. We want more of God. By the way, it still ought to be our goal. <laughs> Man, I want more of Him. If Jesus is coming soon, 
I want all of Jesus I can get. Hey, if the Lord, if we're going to be accountable to God, and you will, I want to get just as close as I can. And I'll do that through prayer. And I'll do that through my daily Bible reading. I'll, I'll, I, 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 my, my, uh, my Bible reading, I read, I, my, I read 50 chapters a week. That's my goal. Uh, I like that. God speaks to my heart. Spend some good times in prayer. That all helps me get more of God instead of less. I'm coming to church every time the door's open. And not just because I'm your preacher. I want more of God. Not less of God. Listen, let's, let's serve the Lord well. Let's focus forward and serve Him well. I want to be more prepared, not less prepared. Right? That's the truth. I, I believe there's only... And listen, when I'm, I said all these things this morning, sharing my heart with you, really. And you know what? I believe there's only one way that we can stay true to our calling. There's only one way we can keep the faith. There's only one way we can serve the Lord well. I want you in on this with me. We've got to get strong in the Lord. We must be strong in the Lord. And again, you'll do that through prayer, your Bible study, your, your worship, your fellowship with fellow believers. There's a lot of things God uses to make us strong in Him. I believe that. Last scripture I'm going to read. You can all turn there if you'd like to. It's found in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 through 9 says this, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, and thou shalt meditate therein day and night, Thou that mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I com Listen to this. Verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. And everybody said, Amen. Hey, be strong. Be of good courage. God's with us. God's with us. I mean, if we have learned anything this year, I think we have. You know what we ought to expect? The unexpected. We need to expect the unexpected. It means everything may turn out, not turn out just the way you planned. May need to be, you might be shocked at something that happens down the road in the course of this year. Because the simple fact is this. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But the good news, church, is we know who holds tomorrow. Hey, God's with us. And that's, He's our blessing. He's our joy. He's our victory. God is faithful. What an awesome God we serve this morning. God is faithful. I said it's not been a salvation message by any means. But we've just shared the ministry and the vision that God has laid on our heart for 2022. It is to do this. It is to win as many lost people to Jesus as we can and stay strong as a church. Stay strong. Regardless what happens this year, let's be strong in the Lord. And it's not just something that we all say and agree. I say, Amen, you all with me? And everybody says, Amen, we're with you, preacher goes a lot deeper than that. Because for you to be strong in the Lord is a personal choice. For you to be strong in the Lord is going to stretch your faith. For you to be strong in the Lord, you got to step out yourself and make some personal commitments to be all that you can be for Jesus. More of Him, not less. All we can to serve the Lord who, by the way, is on the way. He's at the door. The next trumpet we hear could be the trumpet of the Lord. Oh, listen, church. Be strong in the Lord. Stand with me.
Brother James is going to just lead us in one verse of a song. And if you need prayer, the altar's open. I don't know that there's anyone here that needs to get saved, but if you're lost, you need Jesus. You need Christ as your Savior and Lord more than anything else in life. Say, oh, I want to have a good year. You'll not have a good year without Jesus. We need the Lord. Might be somebody just needs to come and pray. Hey, the altar's open. Be strong in the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you just now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this, the, the message, the scriptures you laid on our heart this last week. And Lord, we've just put it all together. We've shared our heart. We've shared our vision for gospel light. And Lord, we want to be found faithful. We want to end well. We want to serve you well. Lord, we want to be all we can be for you and do all we can do for you. So Lord, I pray would you bless this, our church family that's with us this, this morning. Lord, many of our folks will be watching this online later today. Speak to their hearts as well. Let them make personal commitments. Lord, let them make fresh commitments to be all they can be for you. Let us be strong in the Lord. If there's a need in the house this morning, I pray they'll bring it to this altar and get victory in Jesus, we pray. Amen. One verse, James. Everybody said amen. God bless you this morning. Hey, isn't it good being in church on Sunday morning? Sing our song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because i know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lived. And everybody said, praise the Lord. God bless 